of rage. You are the machine that... Are we to waste our time on ceremony, or are we to fight? So, Darksiders 3 is the latest installment in the Darksiders series. I know that seems like I'm a Captain Obvious, but it's true. Now, the interesting thing about the Darksiders franchise is that each installment really does feel different from the last one. So you had the original Darksiders, which was very much like a Zelda-inspired adventure game that had some puzzle elements and some combat elements. And then you had Darksiders 2, which took more of a hack-and-slash model, which was very similar to a Diablo. It even had, like, the color-coded loot system and the branching tiers for character upgrades. So what is Darksiders 3? Well, it's basically Dark Souls. You know, they even call them souls that you actually get in the game by defeating enemies. And then if you die in the middle of the game, uh, your souls just get left where you died and you respawn at your nearest checkpoint, one of uh, Vulgrim's snake holes or whatever he calls them. Another similarity to that series is that your souls are used as your only currency, your soul currency. <laughs> anyway, you can use them to upgrade your level, which gets you more ability points, or you can use them to buy potions, equipment, that kind of thing. However, I will say that overall the game does play a lot smoother and easier than a Dark Souls game, mostly because Fury, your main character in this title, has taken a couple cues from Dante from Devil May Cry and uh, can basically do moves like this. So, yeah, that makes it a little bit simpler. Not that the game doesn't have its challenges, and they did include a story mode if you don't want to deal with the dark soulsiness of it so much, which is nice. Uh, I actually appreciate that. Heaven and hell working in secret consort. Storyline's pretty cool, too. Uh, you know, the horsemen are actually the best part of the Darksiders franchise. You know, they all feel like actually fleshed out characters with their own motivations and a very strange relationship to one another, which you get in full force here. You start to realize that Fury is really not like her brothers and kind of has a chip on her shoulder about her place in the Horsemen. And she doesn't really want to believe war, she has more of an interest in seeing her own position as the head of the horsemen, and will do whatever she needs to in order to achieve that goal. But the nice thing about this game is that Fury actually gets a character arc. It's actually kind of something interesting that I've seen in the series, where it feels like you actually see character growth from all of these characters as they go through. You know, Fury is kind of angry about a lot of things and feels betrayed or outcast even within her own group among the horsemen doesn't feel like she really belongs or has a place and by the end of the story without giving a lot away uh, she definitely comes around to actually caring about others even creatures she didn't before like these humans that she keeps interacting with idiots it's a miracle they ruled the Earth for as long as they did. She only is really helping because there's a monetary reason for it, as the makers explain. But eventually she starts to realize how important they can be and why it is necessary for her to help them out. She sort of gains a conscience where she starts doing things because she realizes that it is morally just rather than just beneficial to herself. And that was a really nice character arc that you don't necessarily see in a lot of adventure titles. In terms of how the game plays and, and the world building, it's all pretty good. I also like the storyline because what you get in this is a battle with the seven deadly sins, which are actually manifested into these boss characters. And they're all really interesting character models. They did a really good job fleshing them out. They look the parts. And you will have a suitable amount of fun taking them down very, very brutally. The other neat thing that you get in this game that I thought was really cool to play around with is over the course of the game, Fury develops these elemental abilities, and so you get to have essentially different modes that she can transform into. It allows for different sub-weapons and different special abilities. 
Okay, basically you become Storm from the X-Men, there I said it. Some of them are contextual to the game, so you do find that you will need many of them, even just to proceed further in certain areas. It really works pretty well, and it does keep you coming back to certain areas, so you might feel a little bit like it's a Zelda or a Metroid. They haven't lost that completely. But I would still say that the main influence for this title was a Dark Souls. And, you know, Devil May Cry is soon behind it, and maybe a little bit of Diablo and a little bit of Zelda thrown in for good measure. I would also like to make my prediction right now that Darksiders 4, if we end up following Strife, which I'm guessing we will because it's the only horseman we haven't had as an active player character, will probably be like Borderlands based on his character model and design. Probably like a first-person shooter. No! that has some skill trees and abilities like that, taking some of the best things that they've learned from the series and applying it for something that works for his character model. Really gets his six-shooter out and working. And considering how Gearbox has been dragging their feet on Borderlands 3, we may actually see a Darksiders 4 sooner, so looking forward to that. Strife actually makes a cameo later in the game, not going to tell you too much about that, uh, but you do definitely get that he is a character worth exploring further. Having now seen all of the horsemen in the games, uh, three of them as playable characters, and one represented in cutscenes and such, I'm not sure which one I like the most. War is kind of a stoic boy scout in a lot of ways, it, a, a strange boy scout, but one nonetheless. Uh, Death seems pretty motivated, and he looks super cool. Uh, Fury is uh, actually a, a really interesting character, and I liked her a lot in this game. Uh, but I don't know, I think that Strife done right uh, could end up being my favorite out of the bunch. And uh, when you play the game, if you see the ending and everything, you might understand why. There's, uh, there's a lot to explore with him, but I think that there's uh, a really interesting story considering his personality and the fact that he is kind of uh, the do-right-by-everyone sort of character and also essentially a cowboy with a revolver. And so he might be awesome. If you were to, however, ask me which game in the series I liked the most, while this does do uh, a good job and has a fair amount of content and I like the structure of it, I would have to say Darksiders 2 is probably the best of the bunch. It's very well structured, there's a lot, a lot of content, the loot system worked really well, and I liked the, the tech trees and such, you know, I think that overall playability of that game was the overall best. It was the best structure. I think like the Diablo style hack and slash model works really well for this franchise and the world that they've built. Uh, and uh, I think it's the most enjoyable part, so I would hope that they extend that out in future installments, but who knows? There's stuff to like in each one of the installments, and hopefully they're learning as they go. You know, Gunfire Games has a really interesting franchise with Darksiders. You know, it's actually pretty engaging, and it has sort of this religious mythos part to it, but it does work really well the way they've presented it, and I am looking forward to future installments. This one was an enjoyable enough journey, and uh, I think that it has enough cool things in it to set it apart from the other games. Not necessarily the best in the franchise, but, uh, you know, it, it's a cool series. I like the series and the characters. I think my biggest problem, though, is that uh, I don't know if we're ever going to see those sins again. And the sins were kind of cool. It did beg the question, like, am I more a horseman or a sin? Because the sins are oddly relatable. Which is weird. And uh, that's not a question I thought I would have to broker when I played this game. But, you know, here we are. Anyway, uh, so yeah, no, you, you like whips and high heels and um, glowing hair. This game is perfect for you. If you like action games or adventure games, you're going to enjoy this just fine. Uh, if you like the Dark Souls series, yeah, this, this is like that, but with more of almost like a heavy metal vibe, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, you know, imagine if the character in Dark Souls had a giant whip and could jump around and flip over people. Wouldn't that be cool? 
good news. So, three swords total? So it seems. <laughs> it's always three, isn't it? Pardon? Three keys, three stones, three swords. Rather predictable, don't you think? Have you lost your mind? No. I just hate it when the creator takes shortcuts. Oh, burn! On yourself! Game devs? Yeah! It's Fashion Week here on Darksiders. Let's look at the Elemental Collection. Alright, Fury has this lovely fiery number. That's pretty great. Oh, but how about the electric one? Yeah. And, oh, here we go. The purple. That's an element. And, of course, the icy one. Brr, I'm cold already. Alright, we'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors.